Okay, and I'm welcome to your video tutorial on factorising algebraic expressions. We've actually already looked at factorising this year. This should hopefully be a little bit of a revision. Okay, when we factorise, we put back into brackets. It's simplifying algebraic expressions and it's the opposite of expanding. We put the, fa the common factor on the outside of the brackets and what it needs to be multiplied by on the inside of the brackets. We can work out if we've done it correctly by re-expanding. So, what do you have to do to prove that you understand factorising? The first thing you have to be able to do is you have to be able to identify common factors. So, the common factor goes on the outside of the brackets. Before we start looking at that, let's look at the, to see that we have a good understanding of HCFs or highest common factors, okay? Now, it says determine the highest common factor of the following, 6a and 6ab. Okay, if you look at these two numbers, sorry, if you look at these two terms, there's numbers and pronumerals. There is a factor that will go into the numbers and a common factor amongst the pronumerals. So if we look at the numbers, there's 6 and 8. There is a common, uh, highest common factor that belongs to them. Now, 1 goes into them. Remember, factors are numbers that go into another number. 1 goes into them, 2 goes into them, 3 doesn't go 3 goes into 6 but doesn't go into 8 4 goes into not 4 doesn't go into either 5 doesn't go in okay so it's looking like when i count through my numbers that 2 is going to be my highest common factor for the numbers but there's also another common factor when i look at the pro numerals i've got a and ab okay so a and ab a common factor amongst a and ab is a Okay, so the highest common factor of 6a and 8ab is 2a. Let's look at the next set of terms. It says determine the highest common factor of 3x squared and 6x squared. The highest common factor of 3 and 6 is 3 itself. How did I get that? Well, I said 3 goes into 3 once and into 6 twice, and there's no number bigger than that. The highest common factor of x squared and xy is x. Okay, because there's an x there, and x squared means x times x, so two instances of x. Okay, so x can be a common factor. So, factorise the following. What we need to do is we need to put the highest common factor of these two terms on the outside of the brackets. So let's look at 40 and 16b. 40 and 16b. Now, there's only one pronumeral, so I can't have a common factor amongst my pronumerals. 40 and 16, okay. Um, what's half of 16? 8, okay. 8, does 16 go into, no, 16 doesn't go into 40, so 1 goes, 2 goes, 3 doesn't, 4 goes, 5 doesn't, 6 doesn't, 7 doesn't, 8. Okay, so it's going to be 8. 8 is going to be my highest common factor. Then I put the brackets, okay? See how I've drawn the brackets already? That's what I want you to do. Then you need to ask yourself, what brackets mean multiply? So what do I have to multiply eight by to get to 40? Oh, well, that's pretty easy, five, okay? Then the next thing is, what do I have to multiply eight by to get negative 16b? Okay, well, the first thing, if that eight's a positive, I'm gonna multiply it by a negative. 8 into 16, 8 ones are 8, 8 twos are 16. And then what's left over? B. Okay, so I think my answer is 8 brackets 5 minus 2B. How can I check to see if, if, if I factorise correctly? Well, it's pretty easy, I can expand. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times negative 2B, 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. And then I'm left with a B. Okay, that marries up with that which means sweet, I've done it right. Let's have a look at this example here. Negative 8x squared and 12x, okay? The highest common factor for negative 8 and negative 12 is negative 4, okay? Because 4, negative, because they're both negatives, so I know it's going to be a negative number, okay? Um, and 4 is the highest. 2 goes into them, 1 goes into them, 4, 8 doesn't go into 12, so it's going to be 4. Now, a common factor amongst x squared and x is going to be x itself. Then I put the brackets. Then I ask myself, what do I have to do to get from negative 4x 
to negative 8x squared. Okay, remember it's a negative. What do I multiply a negative by to get an answer of a negative? Okay, mm that would have to be 2. Negative 4 multiplied by positive 2 is negative 8. What do I have to multiply x by to get x squared? X itself. Then, negative 4, what do I have to do to get from negative 4x to negative 12x? Okay, if the answer is still a negative, I must be multiplying by a positive. Okay, 4 multiplied by what gets me 12? 3. So my answer becomes negative 4x brackets 2x plus 3. And that's it, guys. That is your revision on factorising. If I wanted to check my last answer, all I would have to do was, like in the previous example, expand it.